welcome back to TNM Farms. It is a beautiful Thursday outside, a nice 22 degrees Celsius, very nice. So as you may have seen from the intro, uh, we did get a delivery from Ag Leader. Uh, pretty exciting. Uh, big thanks to Ben and O'Neill's farm equipment and Boyat, uh, the regional manager for Ag Leader, uh, coming up and uh, delivering this system to us. Big thanks to you guys. Um, so, as you guys may have remembered from last season, uh, we did have an Outback uh, Rebel system in our tractor installed for guidance. It was guidance only. And um, we didn't have any auto steer. Uh, now to upgrade with that system and stay with that system, we would have to replace the whole steering wheel on our tractor because our tractor is not auto steer uh, equipped. So we decided to go with the Ag Leader system and for a few reasons. The first one is for their aftermarket system, uh, if your tractor is not already prepped for it, you can buy something called the Steady Steer which is a clamp-on rim mount unit for the tractor and this will clamp onto your wheel there's a wheel and a ring gear behind it and that goes on your steering wheel it clamps on it and it it will turn your steering wheel for you that there is currently the on track three we're just waiting delivery for the uh, steady steer which uh, ben and them will get me hopefully within the next week or so and we can install that um, and the second reason why we went with the ag leader system is it's so versatile. We bought the yield monitoring kit for our John Deere 9500 combine, and we're gonna basically bring the antenna over, bring the drive unit over, and the monitor into our combine, and we're gonna have auto steer on the combine as well, and we're also gonna have uh, the yield monitor tied into one monitor, so we don't have to buy two different systems. So it's really an all-in-one unit, and it's also ISO bus capable, so now if we wanna get ISO bus um, implements in the future, we can do that, because now we have the monitor to control them. So yeah, it's a very uh, high-tech system and we're gonna go ahead and uh, start installing it. Um, I did play around with the monitor there uh, last night. If you saw that on Instagram there, I was trying out the unit, just uh, everything. I already programmed most of our implements in. I did not do the tractor yet. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the GPS mounting plate. This is the one for our Outback. It's just a circle magnet. The new one, if, you can't see it down there, but it's a big oval. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the plate up here, see if it'll fit and if it will not, I'm going to go ahead and remove this old one with a heat gun and a, a scraper there and we'll pull this old one off and we'll stick the new GPS mounting plate on this tractor and then we can start running wires and put installing the monitor. Should be pretty fun so uh, let's get started here. So the way that this mounts here is it's just got two little sticky tabs on the bottom and when you sit there it'll be stuck onto the tractor like so. So it obviously can't go there. And that's a little too far back. It needs to go right there. So we are going to have to indeed pull this unit off. So I'm going to go grab a heat gun and then we're going to try and scrape this sucker off because it is in the way. So I will be right back. We got the uh, old antenna plate off right here. So now here I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to wipe this surface down with an alcohol wipe. It's a 199.9% alcohol wipe. So you do not want to be smelling this, that's for sure. Alrighty, we got this plate mount here. It is not going anywhere. I'm gonna go grab the antenna and just see how it fits. Okay, we got that GPS uh, mounted, and now uh, time for a quick break. And then we're gonna go ahead and start uh, working on everything else, get the monitor mounted and whatnot. Okay, so now what we're gonna do here is I got a piece of metal. I just, I'm gonna start drilling some holes here. This way we can mount it to our monitor rail inside the tractor so we're gonna go ahead and drill two holes here and then we're uh, gonna drill two holes to mount this uh, ram mount we're gonna drill four holes over here sorry four holes to mount that ram mount and then the monitor mounts the ram mount just like the old one so uh, let's go ahead and drill some new holes okay there so we've got our 
uh, mounting bracket drilled. We got our two drill ho our holes for the uh, rail, and we got our four holes here for our ram mount. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this outside. And I'm gonna toss a quick coat of uh, black paint on this, and uh, we'll get this all dried up, and then we'll put it in the tractor. This should be good. So let's go paint this sucker. There we go, this thing's all painted here. We'll let this dry and it'll be good to go. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and mount our ram mount onto there. I'm gonna grab my bolts here that I need. Alrighty, so now we got our metal here. We're gonna go ahead and mount this inside the tractor. Gonna go ahead here and tighten this sucker up. Right here, we're gonna open up our ram mount, our ram mount arm, I should say. There we go. This is going to go on the ball, like so. And we're going to go ahead and grab our monitor and install this sucker. Okay, so we got the monitor mounted here. Just put the ram mount in there, looking good. Uh, we're just going to start by running our first harness. This is our power harness. This one goes into port A. Or the main port on the uh, monitor, just the twist lock, which is awesome. We're going to run our cable in this tractor down up here, I believe, because I can't get it in between here. So we're going to go up here and then down and we'll, we'll zip tie it all nice. So let's uh, tie up this cable here like so. Okay, so I got all my wires ran down here. Now I'm gonna go grab the actual power harness and I'm gonna run that uh, because this, I don't know where exactly I'm gonna put it yet, but I think it has to go into here. So let's... Uh... Okay, so I was just getting the power harness ready. This is the power harness that distributes power to the, uh, the different elements of the system. The monitor's mounted as you saw earlier. I just put this quick connect on here. It might be a little bit small, but these wires aren't too thick themselves. So I don't think it should draw much power. And in here, you see there's a power splitter which goes out of that there so we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try this out and see if it works if the wires get a little warm I'll have to figure something else out but uh, I have confidence that we should be good so let's uh, plug this wire in and uh, see if it uh, works good so these are quick connects here I'm gonna grab the harness so we're gonna go ahead and plug this in now I'm going to test to make sure we have the correct polarity. And we do have 12 volts and we got it the correct orientation. So we're going to try to move some of these cables here. And I have just got to get this one into there and done. Now we're going to run it outside the cab here and up to the uh, antenna. We're going to go ahead and install this here. As we can see here. It should be very simple to very 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 simple to install there. Now we're gonna run the cable down the side of the tractor. There's what I have so far. It's just tucked up under there. It's gonna come down and then I just gotta run the rest. So I'm gonna reposition here and get this thing done. So what we've got is we've got the antenna mounted on the roof. The cable's all down here. I mean, it's just a lot of cables. It's not gonna get much cleaner than that. The power's coming out of here and uh, that's all coming up the main power cable up into the root of the uh, monitor and if we power this thing on here looks like we got power and there we go she turned green I do have a battery charger on the battery just to uh, maintain it there and uh, in command 1200 it's not bad we don't have much play in it which is good 
I just accept all the terms and conditions and if I go here and I have all my access to everything so it's working good I'm happy with that we're gonna power this sucker down and uh, that's good basically now we have guidance now we got to do is set up the auto steer portion as you can see it's pretty late at night here I think it's about nine o'clock and I haven't eaten yet so we're gonna go on home and uh, have some nice dinner uh, but uh, we do have the auto steer system to mount this is a clamp on system that we're gonna be installing and uh, that should be coming up very soon all it quits for now here, just how late it is. Uh, all the systems installed there, uh, antenna and everything, as well as the monitor. All that's left is the actual uh, auto steer system itself. We'll put that into Marlers, so uh, see you then. Okay, welcome back everybody. It's the following day here. We're going to finish off by installing the actual uh, drive unit. Right now we are installing the Legacy on track 3 unit. Uh, I'm just going to grab it here. Uh, we're installing the Legacy unit because due to the big uh, winter storm in Texas, there has been a, a supply shortage in building the new ones. So our egg leader dealer that we purchased this through, uh, O'Neill's Farm Equipment, provided us with the Legacy on track 3 for now, just to get us going in case we do end up planting and for whatever reason, we're stuck without the new steady steer unit, which should be coming in hopefully soon. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install this unit. And uh, to do that, there's a few pieces we gotta do. This is the bottom ring gear. This goes at the bottom of the column. You have to remove this section there, which we will do any minute here. And you have to, uh, this is your top ring and that's just your trim to go on top of it. These are all for pre-designed for different tractors. These ones won't fit ours, however. Uh, so we're gonna have to uh, use the universal system here. Okay, we're so. gonna go ahead here and start by removing our two screws so we can get this underneath the column. And now, as you're gonna see here, this will just slowly get the wig lid off a little here. But that comes off like so. So this is gonna slide underneath our steering column and then we're gonna reassemble this and then we're gonna put our top portion on. So let's go into the tractor now and uh, let's go put this in. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and slide this on. Now, for this tractor, we are using a universal mounting system as, you know, Deutz is not as common up here in North America, so nothing's really built for it unless you buy the tractor with it. So, this is an aftermarket system from Ag Leader, uh, but it should work uh, great. I'm using this little ring here that we came with as a spacer. Okay, so now we have our ring assembly on. I'm going to go grab the drive motor and just test fit it, make sure everything fits and turns freely still. And then we should be good to finish up the harness wiring and everything. First thing, we're going to go ahead and toss our little egg leader cover on top there make it look nice. Now we have our drive motor unit. This thing opens up like so. You pull this up and then you can pull that out out of the way and then it just opens up and it clamps on. There's a ring gear, a, a gear there that, that will clamp onto the ring gear. So as you can see we have our drive unit on and the steering wheel does turn here. Um, I do have the ECU and all the harnesses. I'm just gonna loosely wire it up quick. It seems like it'll work, but I'm just gonna run these wires quick. You guys can watch me here. I'm just gonna uh, do that, and then we'll test this sucker and see if she works. So uh, let's try it. Everybody. So, uh, as you would have saw, installed our egg leader system in the tractor, looking great. Just waiting for the steady steer on that. Anyways, uh, what you might not have known uh, yet is that we've got the planter in the shop here. Looking good, and uh, so we're just doing some work on it, and uh, we're just taking a look at these things here. All that's looking good, but what we did is, uh, if you follow us on Instagram, you would have known that we changed these tires on this wing in the fall and anyways it makes no sense to have brand new tires on the wing because the wings are folded up half the time when you go into the road we want the tires here 
And when we did, we noticed that this hub needed some new bearings there. So we got some new bearings and I just got the new seal in today. So we're gonna go ahead and install that seal, get the bearings packed and get that hub reassembled and get the tire on. We're done with that little project. And then uh, we're gonna move on to do some other stuff, but maybe not today, we'll see. So, uh, okay, we got the hub off there and we're just gonna go ahead and get the seal in here, knocked in place quick. Hub back on here. And here's a little tip, YouTubers, when you're making your videos and your screen goes blank on your GoPro 9, just hit the camera lens with your nose. He doesn't know that I did that. Too tight. That's too tight. Too tight? How's that see. right there? You don't necessarily need a four pound hammer for this, but this will do the job. Gotta get the Graham video here. Certified Graham. By the way guys, go ahead and check us out on Instagram. Follow us on there for uh, lots of behind the scenes content.